Now wait a minute, we've been doing probability in one dimension, but what about higher dimensions? What about multiple integrals? Well, of course, probability makes sense on domains other than 1D. We can move from 1D to higher dimensions. We can look at random variables on Rn. Consider a random variable, capital X, in Rn. This is characterized by a probability density, rho a scalar-valued function on Rn that, just like in 1D, has to be non-negative and has to have total mass equal to 1. That is, if I integrate rho of x dx with respect to the volume element on Rn, I get a net mass of 1. So if I want to know what's the probability that a randomly chosen vector in Rn lies in some subset A, then I integrate the probability element dp, which is rho of x dx, over that subset A. If I integrate rho of x dx over A, I get the probability that a randomly chosen point lies in this subset A. So if you just pick a single point and say, what are the odds that I'm at this point? Well, it's zero because the integral over a point is nothing, even if the density is really high. But if you choose some subset A, integrate, figure out the probability mass of that subset, that tells you the probability that a randomly chosen point lies in that. And as you look at larger and larger subsets, you get larger and larger probabilities. Okay, now, all of that is the, the basics of computing probability based on a probability density. What about expectation? The expectation is simply the center of mass with respect to this probability density rho. So to compress things notationally, I would say that the expectation e of x is the integral of x times rho of x dx, where that's a bit of a notational abuse. Actually, there are n different integrals, one for each coordinate of that center of mass, of that expectation. The variance, however, is computed by exactly the same formula that we're used to. V of x is the integral of the distance squared to the expectation with respect to probability mass times, times rho of x dx. And the standard deviation, as before, is the square root of the variance. If you think of expectation as a center of mass and variance as something like a moment of inertia, how hard it is to rotate that probability mass about an axis going through the expectation, then that sort of mass analogy carries over into n dimensions as well. Okay, those are the definitions, but the question that is unanswered is why? Why pay attention to random variables in n dimensions? Well, there are lots of reasons, but one that I like very much comes from engineering where you're trying to estimate the location or the bearing or the velocity of a, an autonomous car or a robot or a car that turns into a robot, something like that. If you want to estimate its state, you might get that information from a variety of different sensors, but those sensors are, are noisy. They have some uncertainty. So you don't know exactly what your state is, but you do know a probability density. And you might be able to characterize the uncertainty of your estimate in terms of the variance. You might be able to improve the uncertainty by getting more sensor readings. So instead of saying, oh, I know exactly that I'm here, you say, oh, I know a probability density and my expectation tells me that I'm here with uh, highest probability, but that really I have to argue in terms of subsets. And maybe I have a very spread out probability density. There's a lot of uncertainty. Maybe I have a really tight probability density. Ooh, I really know where I'm at. Or maybe I have some unusual situation where I've got different sensor readings that are giving me conflicting information. I might be over here, or I might be over here a little bit, and I'm not sure. The wonderful thing about working with probability densities is that you can encode these various complicated types of uncertainties into a density function and then use things like expectation, variance, standard deviation in order to characterize what you know.